On today's episode of You Asked, which Panasonic TV can stand up to the Sony A95L? Will the Apple TV get Dolby Atmos Flex Connect? And is your TV spying on you? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is You Asked, the show where I answer questions you asked in hopes that I can help you and others who have similar tech questions. If you've got a question for me, please send it to youasked at digitaltrends.com and we'll see if your question gets picked to be answered on the show. Before we get started, can we just take a moment to celebrate that this episode marks the six month anniversary of this series? What? Six months already? Time flies when you're having fun answering tech questions, I guess. Anyway, this show's success is all thanks to you watching right now. Myself, Chris, Zeke, and Greg, who you don't hear about very much, but who is an instrumental member of our core video team here at Digital Trends, we all thank you very much. Won't be long before we're celebrating a full on year. And since I'm so into celebrations, I'm already working on a fun giveaway just for all of you, you asked fans. It might might involve doing a little video Easter egg hunt. I don't know, I'm still thinking about that, but I promise you it will be fun and not just because it involves free stuff. Okay, with that bit of business out of the way, let's get to some questions. Paul Fillingham asks, which Panasonic almost matches the Sony? And Mark Riley asked, which European Panasonic holds up to the A95L? The answer is the Panasonic MZ2000. Uh, pardon me, I meant to say, the Panasonic MZ2000. At IndieBossy4817 writes, why don't you ever speak about Panasonic? What do you mean? I just did. No, I know, I know what you mean, I'm kidding. We actually talk about this quite a bit on the channel, but since we're attracting lots of new folks to this community, I think it's just something we need to keep on repeat. So first, I'm assuming you mean Panasonic TVs, because if you met Panasonic Blu-ray players, the answer is because I've not been doing many Blu-ray player reviews lately, though it's gonna be a bit different this year because I've got this Magnetar here and need to compare it to a Panasonic player, I think. But assuming you meant why I don't speak about Panasonic TVs, the simplest answer is because I can't get them in to experience them myself. I mean, Panasonic doesn't have a distribution network for TVs in North America anymore, which makes me very sad. And that means that the majority of my viewers can't buy them, at least not easily. But this being a global channel, I would like to pull in notable TVs like Panasonic OLEDs, and I'll try to make that happen. It's just, it's surprisingly tricky. The only way for me to get them is to get them from a retailer and we don't buy TVs for reviews. In fact, I have a whole video about that here. It's not like I'm ignoring that Panasonic exists or pretending like they don't make some of the best TVs you can buy. I just can't get my hands, or more importantly, my eyes, on them. At least not very easily. I'll see what I can do, but this won't be the first year that I've tried to make it happen. But we can always hope for better this year. Dr. Vader Who writes, do you think the Apple TV will get Dolby Atmos Flex Connect? This is just my gut talking, but no, I don't think so. I don't see Apple adding to the cost of the Apple TV unless it leads to selling more Apple products. If Apple added Dolby Atmos Flex Connect, it would do so out of the goodness of its heart to let folks use Flex Connect capable speakers. But those speakers would compete with the HomePod and HomePod Mini. Flex Connect will likely get folded into TV hardware, possibly other streaming boxes, maybe sound bars and even AV receivers. I think it is far more likely though that Apple would create a tuning algorithm that works similarly to Flex Connect in that it would allow more randomized placement of HomePod and HomePod Mini speakers to deliver spatial audio and Dolby Atmos. Apple has the chops to do that. I think this kind of technology is gonna be dominated by Sony, Apple, and Dolby, and I reckon Dolby is the only one that will license it for use by any home entertainment brand willing to pay for it. Break Time 10101 asked, Caleb, why won't you answer my question of why TV manufacturers don't add a dedicated HDMI output? This will let the TV do the video switching while sending the audio straight to the soundbar, especially since most of them only have one HDMI input. You would also keep all four inputs available and no more handshake issues. Get rid of Toslink already. And can you please get rid of the background music? It gets annoying after a while. Thank you. Yeah, so I did answer your question. At least I think it was yours, but I answered the question. Carl with a K. I think was the name. Anyway, the answer is in You Asked, episode 20 at the seven minute and 37 second mark. 
please check it out. And sorry, I think we'll be keeping the background music, though I am curious if you're using headphones or a TV or a soundbar or what. I don't personally find it annoying unless I'm watching on a TV or sound system with fake surround turned on, then it gets artificially bumped up and yeah, that can be kind of annoying. By the way, guys, if you want me to call you by your proper name or even a fake name, which is fine, please sign your emails with that because it isn't always clear based on your screen name or your email alias. And also some of your screen names are understandably just wacky with lots of digits and such. So if your name is Chuck, just sign your question with Chuck or Charles or Chancellor McBuggins. Just something that's easy to read maybe, or don't, your call. I'm gonna answer your question if I like it regardless. Speaking of which, here we go. Dad's Pro J07 writes, Hi Caleb, I love your reviews, very informative. What are your thoughts about the issue of spying for TCL TVs and Hisense TVs? Yeah guys, I have been, well, I'm gonna be honest, I've been avoiding this one for a while. Not because I don't wanna answer it, but because answering it is gonna be a whole thing. It's a whole feature video. But since I'm slammed, and it's entirely possible I won't be able to put out a dedicated video on this, I'm gonna go ahead and answer it here because I figure just because I address a topic on this show doesn't mean it can't end up being discussed in its own video. So what are my thoughts about the issue of spying for TCL TVs and Hisense TVs? Well, first, Let's just call out that you mentioned two very specific brands, and I suspect I know why, but we'll get back to that. Let's start with the notion of spying. What is spying in the context of a TV? Would it be about gathering data about your viewing habits, like that you like rom-coms or trashy horror flicks, or that you spend a lot more time watching Disney Plus than Netflix? Because if that's spying, well, all smart TVs and streaming devices do that. Maybe it's something more specific though, like using the microphone, or if your TV has one, the camera to actually listen and look in on your home. I mean, that's pretty invasive. That just sounds bad and feels icky. What other spying could there be? Well, I suppose that the TV could be monitoring your home's internet traffic and reporting it back. If sophisticated enough, I suppose it could pick up on video feeds from your internet connected security cameras to get video and audio from around your home. That also sounds very bad, doesn't it? Spying has a naturally negative connotation to it, right? Conceptually, it's a violation of our privacy, but what is the real definition of spying? Is it gathering information without our consent? Gathering information without our awareness? Is it both at the same time? I asked those questions somewhat rhetorically because I think it is important that we give that some thought, but also because I wanted to tee this up. By those definitions, you're already being spied on every single day. What? Unless you live in the sticks and don't get out much, which could very much be the case and good on you. But for most folks, every security camera in every business is taking pictures of your face. Every video doorbell on anyone's property is shooting video and audio of you anytime you walk by. Your cell phone is constantly reporting your location. Your cell phone and laptop both have cameras and microphones. And while you may have tape over your laptop camera, I'm willing to bet that you don't have tape over your phone cameras. I bring this up because I think it is interesting how folks choose to target certain devices as spying risks while other devices are just accepted. They get a pass. Maybe accepted as low risk. Or maybe you've just given up the fight with those devices. But let's bring it back to smart TVs. They are all spying by some definition of that term. And you said that that is okay. I mean, you may not have realized it because you just clicked the yes box when you were setting up your TV, but you did say yes to it, unless you actually scrutinize everything in the setup process and deliberately said no to all of the questions. Regardless, all smart TVs can and most do spy by some definition of the term. But you went and singled out TCL and Hisense. And I'm not singling you out for singling those companies out. Lots of folks are doing that. But why? It's because they are companies based 
in China. In the US, at the very least, we consider China to be a big security threat. And from what I understand, that's for pretty good reasons. I mean, the US has a banned company list and a banned devices list, right? Huawei and ZTE are big names in telecommunications that the US has banned. And that's a big reason why we were and are so behind in the deployment of 5G wireless infrastructure. Less familiar names on the banned list are Hikvision, Dahua, and Hytera, which make video security equipment and two-way radios. So knowing there is a banned list, knowing it is based on a security threat that was detected and analyzed, knowing that some companies have been caught with security holes that had to be fixed in order for those devices to be sold in the US, knowing that clearly there are entire organizations dedicated to assessing risk around these telecommunications devices and taking swift action when needing, knowing all of this, how in the world does it make sense to anyone that TCL and Hisense have somehow shipped millions upon millions of TV units into the US loaded with spyware that has somehow gone undetected? How is it that thousands of genius hackers who, by the way, immediately put Samsung on blast as soon as they figured out how to hijack a TV's built-in camera, how have they somehow slept on Hisense and TCL all this time? How is it that we think they are so advanced over there at making spyware that's undetectable to the brightest minds in the world, and, and yet they struggle to get their HBO Max app to act right? How, how? Also, why is Lenovo off the hook? How about Oppo, Xiaomi, Anchor? And should Taiwan be in the crosshairs too? Because uh, that would involve all kinds of brands, including Acer, Asus, Gigabyte, MSI. No, no. But what if just a few got through, you might propose? All right, that's fair. What if Hisense or TCL managed to just plant a few spying TVs in the US, betting that they would be covered by the millions of clean products coming into the US? That Seems unlikely and borders on conspiracy theory, but I'll entertain it. I still think it would be discovered. And let's be honest, how often would precious data be exposed? Yeah, I'd be concerned about my credit card number being read aloud where something could hear it and then maybe AI could figure that out and connect some dots and put that information in front of someone uh, in some database with millions and millions of other entries. But let's be honest, guys, most of the time, they're gonna get your kids fighting over the remote or the switch controller, your aunt's Texas hash recipe, and maybe the knowledge that you get pretty gassy after eating more than three chalupas in just one sitting. Now, to be clear, and for legal reasons, I should point out that I have no hard evidence or inside knowledge that supports or refutes this suspicion. This is opinion and opinion only, just observations. Yeah, so that's what I think about the issue, that it isn't an issue, at least not yet, thank goodness. And I thank the folks who work hard to make sure that it isn't an issue. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I won't even ask you to leave a comment because I know you already did. Slap this video with a like if you support the idea of the occasional rant. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. <sighs> that actually felt good.